Lesson five, practice problems. We've got rectangles P, Q, R, and S. They're scaled copies of one another. For each pair, decide if the scale factor from one of the other, or one to the other, is greater than one, equal to one, or less than one. So, brief recap here, if you guys, if it's, if it's greater than one, okay, if, if it's greater than one, it means it is bigger. It got bigger. If it's less than one, it got smaller. It was a reduction. If it's equal to one, then it's, um, you know, it's the same shape. Same exact size. There was no change to it at all. Okay, so uh, for the first one, it says from P to Q. From P to Q. So from P to Q, right there, that's definitely getting bigger. So that is greater than one. All right, from P to R. Right here, P to R, that is definitely bigger. So that's greater than one. All right, from Q to S. All right, now that went from bigger to smaller. Not, not, Q is not the biggest shape there is there, but Q is bigger than S, so that's going to be less than 1. And by the way, if you don't know your signs, you know this is less than, this is greater than. I always remembered it. I know the, the alligator always works for a lot of people, but I always remember less than because it kind of looks like an L to me. You know, it looks like an L. And that way I don't forget it. Because you get the alligator analogy kind of breaks down when you start dealing with variables like X and N and stuff like that because you're not sure what N is or X is. So it's, it's good to know what the actual symbol is, you know. All right, so you yeah, erase. Can I have too many markings on here? Uh, from Q to R, from Q to R, we're going from here to here. Now that's going from big to small. So that is less than one right there. That's less than one. From S to P. So right there, from S to, oops, I went, that's S to R. From S to P right here. Uh, now that doesn't look like it changed at all. So that, I would say that that's equal to one. Those are exactly the same scale. All right, and then uh, from R to P. Now that's going from big to small, so that is going to be less than one. And then from P to S. All right, now P to S is going to be the same as S to P, and that's going to be equal to one. All right, so those are pretty simple. All right, for number two, it says triangles S and triangle L are scaled copies of one another. Question A, what is the scale factor from S to L? What is the scale factor from S to L? All right, so, I mean, there's a number of things you can look at here, but I'm gonna look at this bottom part. Right here, that is two. Okay, and then the corresponding part for that is right here. That's one, two, three, four, right? So that's four. right there. All right, so what's the scale factor from S to L? Well, from S to L, it got bigger, so it's going to be greater than 1. So scale factor equals 2. So it doubled, because 2 times 2 is 4. What is the scale factor the other way? What's the scale factor the other way? It's not 2. It's going to be 1 half. 1 half. For triangle M, uh, triangle M is also a scaled copy of S. Where is M? It's in our heads, it's in our imagination. It doesn't really exist unless we kind of draw it, unless you want to do that. The scale factor from S to M is three halves, three over two. What is the scale factor from M to S, from M to S? Now what this problem is basically kind of making you do is see the, see the kind of the connection here between these numbers right here. Now you'll notice that um, two, um, when you flip it, you end up with one half because two as a fraction, you can write two as two over one. And then when you flip that, that becomes one over two. That's called reciprocal. 
there's a reciprocal relationship there when you go both ways. So the same is going to be true for three halves. So three halves is going to flip and go to two thirds. So there's your scale factor. Scale factor is two to three or two thirds. All right, our two our two squares with the same side length scaled copies of one another. Explain the reasoning. Um, yeah, they are. Yes, because they have a scale factor of one. One doesn't seem like much, but that's kind of identity rule. You, you know, multiplying by one definitely is a thing. You multiply by one, so you're going to have that. Uh, for number four, quadrilateral A has side lengths two, three, four, five, and six. Quadrilateral B has side lengths four, five, eight, and ten. Could one of the quadrilaterals be scaled copies of the other? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this up just, just so we can see. We've got two, three five and six and then the scaled copy equivalent is going to be four five eight and ten now um, you know if I just look at the first set of numbers you got a two and a four right there um, that that's a scale factor of two so does that work for the other numbers no it does not three times two is six so that, that's not a scaled copy. 5 times 2 is, is 10. So maybe it's maybe it supposed to go with that. But this one doesn't work either. But yeah, so this is not scaled. All right, select all the ratios that are equivalent to the ratio of 12 to 3. Now 12 to 3, it could also be written like this in fraction form, 12 to 3. Now, if we, if we simplify 12 to 3, that just means 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So you can think of it as 4 to 1 or 4. All right. So A, definitely not. 1 to 4, no. It's not the same as 4 to 1. So no. This one's good right here. Uh, 24 to 6. 24 to 6. Now, does that equal the same thing? 4 to 1 equals 24 to 6. Now, if you multiply that by 6, you know, 4 times 6 is 24, and 1 times 6 is 6. So that's equivalent. All right, 15 to 6. 15 to 6. Let's go back to this. 4 to 1. Does it equal 15? over 6. Um, another way, well, I, I'm not going to do that yet, but if if we multiply this, um, if you want to figure it out, we can do 15 divided by 4, which is going to be 3 and 3 fourths. Alright, so if you multiply uh, 4 times 3 and 3 fourths, you get 15, but if you multiply 1 times 3 and 3 fourths, you should get 3 and 3 fourths, because you're multiplying by 1. And that's definitely not 3 and 3 fourths. So we can count that one out. All right, now this one has really big numbers, but what we can do here is like, especially when you have matching zeros, you have 1,200, 1,200 over 300. One thing that you can do when you're simplifying things is you can always cross out matching zeros. You know, so you got 12 to 3, which is basically the the original ratio. 12 to 3 reduces to, to 4 over 1. So there we go. And then 112, 112 to 13. Okay. Now um, back to the 4 to 1 ratio. Um, you know, 1 times 4 is 4. Now does, does 13 times 4 equal 112? Uh, no, not according to my math. 14, uh, 13 times 4 is like 1,000. No, it's not 1,000. It's uh, 52, right? So that one, you can count out. That's not it. 